Science and technology hold the key to the progress and development of any nation. Technology plays a fundamental role in wealth creation, improvement of the quality of life, and real economic transformation in any society. Science is the study of knowledge, which is made into a system and depends on analyzing and understanding facts. Technology is basically the application of this scientific knowledge. For any successful economy, particularly in today's quest for knowledge-based economies, science, technology, and engineering are the basic requisites. If a nation does not implement science and technology, then the chances of getting developed become minimal. Science and technology are essential tools for rapid development. Today, countries are generally classified as developed or developing. This is based on the economy and the application of science and technology. Countries like Russia, Japan, Brazil, China, and India have a strong base in science and technology and are growing faster. It was estimated by the World Bank that seven of the ten largest economies of the world by the year 2020 would be in Asia. They are China, Japan, India, Thailand, Indonesia, South Korea, and Taiwan. A few decades ago, these countries were known to have poor policies, low discipline, and no advancement. And then, with the introduction of science and technology in an effective manner, they have suddenly made impact across the globe. Young children are naturally inquisitive, full of questions about the world around them and the drive to investigate how things work. It follows, therefore, that we should take advantage of this innate curiosity and start channeling their enthusiasm for scientific discovery as early on as possible. Science education activities provide children with opportunities to develop and practice many different skills and attributes. These include communication, collaborative, teamworking, perseverance as well as analytical, reasoning and problem-solving skills. Beyond that, it helps lay the foundation for the tertiary stage of education. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund is conscious that since the dawn of the 21st century, new and rapidly improving technologies are in the process of transforming higher education. This is the driving force behind its interventions in the field of science, technology, and innovation in Nigeria's public tertiary institutions. There is a direct link between quality higher education and national economic development. These are the chronicles of the journey to institutionalize research and development in Nigeria. Hello and welcome to this edition of TED Fund. The Paradigm Shift. I am Stanley Bentu. There's a growing understanding and recognition of the power of thinking and learning, as well as a belief that science may be a particularly important domain in higher learning institutions, serving not only to build a basis for future scientific understanding, but also to build important skills and attitudes. But what should the nature of science, teaching, and learning be? Well, many would agree that it all begins with the curriculum and to what extent it is designed to feed the social economic needs of a people in a given country like, well, say, Nigeria. Now, while there has been progress in the African continent on education and science, technology, and innovation, the pace at which the world is moving in each of these fields means that Africa as a whole and Nigeria in particular, needs to redouble its efforts just to keep up, and maybe even quadruple its efforts if we desire to become dominant in these fields of endeavor. 
The recent selection of six African nations by the World Health Organization to produce vaccines for Africa is proof that cooperation between African nations works. It also reminds us of how important Nigeria can be for development in Africa if we get our act together. Now this is what was on display when the Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology of the African Union, His Excellency Professor Mohamed Bel Hossein, paid a visit to the Executive Secretary of TED Fund architect Sonny Echono. You must be curious about what the African Union Commission for Education, Science and Technology is and why it's relevant to development in Africa. Well, I am too. So let's find out. The Education, Science, Technology and Innovation ST Commission coordinates the African Union's programs on human resource development, education, science, technology, and promoting the youth development agenda. Its key roles include promoting research and publication on science and technology, promoting cooperation among member states in education and training, encouraging youth participation in the integration of the continent, implementing the Agenda 2063 initiatives for African Virtual and E-University and the Africa Outer Space Strategy, and the implementation of continental educational policies and strategies, such as the Continental Education Strategy for Africa, CESA, the Science, Technology and Innovation Strategy for Africa, STISA, and the TVET Continental Strategy, AU Feeding Initiative. ESTI promotes the work of the AU in the area of education and SCI development. The department also coordinates the AU's education and scientific scholarships and awards, including Inyeri Scholarship and Academic Mobility Program. Kwame Nkrumah Scientific Awards, as well as overseeing the work of specialist AU institutions, including the AU International Center for Girls and Women's Education in Africa, the Pan-African University, and the Pan-African Institute for Education for Development. One of ESSI's major projects is the Pan-African University, a continental initiative of the African Union Commission, AUC, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. It is the culmination of the decision of the Assembly of Heads of States and Governments of the African Union to create the Pan-African University in 2009. The university has five institutes located in the five sub-regions of Africa. Nigeria won on competitive bidding to host the Institute of Life and Earth Sciences for West Africa at the University of Ibadan. The aim of Pan-African University is to develop institutions of excellence in science, technology, innovation, social sciences and governance, which would constitute the bedrock for an African pool of higher education and research. Pan-African University Life and Earth Sciences Institute, including Health and Agriculture, Polesi, offers seven programs with options. These programs are offered at master's and PhD levels. Reproductive health sciences, plant breeding, geosciences, petroleum geoscience and mineral exploration geosciences, environmental management, veterinary, avian medicine and veterinary vaccine production and quality control, medicinal plant research and drug development, sports management and policy, development. The student admission spans through all the African nations of the African Union. The Institute draws its strengths from experts both within and outside Africa and Nigeria. The students are tutored with international standards and Africa stands to be highly proud of them. Being an institution rooted in research development and innovation, located and co-owned by Nigeria, the question is, what role can Tetvan play in its growth?
Well, that is certainly a pertinent question and one that the paradigm shift will provide an answer for when we explore the details of Professor Bell Hossein's visit to the fund. Those who are experts in development have told us that they are key items that determine the quality of life and productivity of a people. Those include economic security, physical safety, food, education, and health. Interestingly, the Pan-African University located in Nigeria has schools in life and health science, earth science, and agriculture, effectively covering four out of the five crucial indicators for quality life. On Friday, the 8th of April, 2022, the Executive Secretary of TED Fund, architect Sonny Echono, received the African Union Commissioner for Education, Science, Technology and Innovation, His Excellency Professor Mohamed Belhossein and his entourage at the fund's headquarters in Abuja. During that visit, the subject of the PAU located at the University of Ibadan came up. Let's find out how that went. At the conference hall of TED Fund, the Executive Secretary, architect Sonia Chono, received a delegation of the African Union's Education, Science, Technology and Innovation Division, led by its Commissioner, Professor Mohamed Belhossein, an Algerian national and former head of the Department of Internal Medicine, who held various positions in Algeria, at the Faculty of Medicine and the Ministry of Health, before joining the International Civil Service in 1997. Professor Belusin congratulated the TED Fund Chief Executive on his appointment and expressed appreciation for TED Fund's collaborations with the AU. I want also uh, Your Excellency to appreciate the, the work TED Fund has done with us because uh, very in the beginning of March, uh, uh, a beautiful building was commissioned to become the main premise of the Pan African University Life and Earth uh, Science in Ibadan. That meant that wouldn't have been possible without your support. So we are very, very grateful for that. We are sure that uh, it, it, it will create uh, better working conditions for our, uh, our Pan African University and uh, Nigeria has been one of the advocates for the creation of this university which has now uh, 10 years of existence. There are uh, four institutes which are uh, operating, one in Western Africa which is the, the, the Paulisi, one in East Africa which is in Nairobi, the other one which is in North Africa in Algeria, and uh, we have one also dealing with governance, humanities, and social sciences uh, in, in Yaoundé, Cameroon, Central Africa. And we are yet to start uh, working on the, uh, to, 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 to launch the last one, which is the space uh, sciences in South Africa. There are some discussions about what, uh, about uh, privileges and immunities. Uh, and we, we hope that that will, uh, will be sorted uh, soon and that we will have the, the, fifth, uh, the fifth institute also going on. The commissioner then shifted the focus of his presentation to the Pan-African University Badon, which has been in existence for over 10 years now and according to him, is a catalyst for the unification of all Africans. While thanking the fund for its support thus far, the professor earnestly requested that TED Fund expand its intervention by providing more classrooms for the university. This Pan-African University, for those who are not very much aware of it, is, is very important in terms of bringing young Africans together. Because so far, uh, thanks to, to, to these, these four institutes which are already operating, uh, we, we were able to train uh, more than 1,500 masters in different areas of focus and 400 PhDs, more than 400 PhDs were trained and these people come from 50 nationalities. 
that is the that is the, the most important thing for us, which is not like uh, it's it's not a, a technical performance measurement. It's just how we are bringing young Africans together, and when you bring them together for uh, for a, a curriculum of three, four, or, or or five years, it means that they happen to know better uh, each other, to know better the other cultures, the other countries, the other languages, the other beliefs of the African uh, uh, countries and it really creates the, this idea of Pan-Africanism uh, it becomes like uh, part of themselves. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, the fact that we, uh, we, we are selecting the best of the best students uh, means that we are really playing an important role in uh, empowering our youth to to be to be the elites of of tomorrow. So Paulesi is one of those institutes. It is here in Ibadan. It is directed by uh, Professor Esther Akilabi, who is here, and uh, we we are very much happy uh, with the, the support that you have given us uh, so far. But still, we, we will need again your support because uh, we are still. Uh, in, you know, we lack some classrooms, we lack some lab equipment. Uh, we are counting very much on the University of Ibadan. Sometimes we are even squeezing there. And uh, also uh, we are working with other institutions like the International Institute of uh, Agriculture, which is also uh, based in, in Ibadan. But uh, it would be good that uh, while we move, we get more autonomy as as uh, stated in the statute of uh, of the Pan African University, and I am sure that that fund could could help us a lot uh, with uh, with regard to this uh, to this uh, uh, endeavor. Responding to the request for the construction of more classrooms and procurement of laboratory equipment for the Pan African University at the University of Ibadan, the Executive Secretary gave assurance that the request would be attended to. I'm glad to have you in our midst today, telling you about the collaborations that are taking place between us and we hope to build on. It took a bit of a while because I understand the initial agreement we are about 2012 for the other house and uh, the project didn't get up the ground until but we are glad we were able to address some of that in March. <laughs> the commissioning ceremony, and we are particularly delighted with the philosophy and objective of the institution. The Pan African approach, the focus on young people, and the fact that uh, besides producing that manpower, it's also doing the type of linkages that we require across Africa for a more beneficial and prosperous future for our continent. I am aware uh, because I've had a very brief on the project, the relationship with uh, the University of Ibadan and the sequencing of your request, but uh, I can assure you that uh, as soon as we get that request, I will uh, do the most important thing of start starting. We should be able to build on that and also uh, forge the right partnerships that will encourage or enable us to uh, push the agenda of the African Union and indeed of the institution that we are. He further assured the delegation that the Nigerian government is moving rapidly towards boosting technology and is currently in the process of establishing a postgraduate national institute in Abuja to stimulate the technology transformation. I should also let you know that uh, the government of Nigeria is activated in that direction, promoting technology, and also we are in the process of establishing a national institute here in Abuja that will be a postgraduate institution but it's also intended to stimulate uh, a technological transformation of our country. Pattern that has similar institutes across the world. So uh, this the Pan African uh, University also fits into this general framework. And we believe the partnership will also be there for ten years now. So uh, we should be able to also learn the eighteen or two from how you were able to attract the right faculty, the right uh, scholars into your university, and how you can also build on that. 
establish ours. Um, beyond the commitment that uh, myself and colleagues have shown on the project and the eagerness to move to the next level of interactions, I would like to uh, assure you that um, within the framework that we have, we give you the maximum support to make that union functional and be able to use uh, very quickly. The idea that peoples of African descent have common interests and should be unified is one that has historically taken the shape of a political or cultural movement. Recognizing that these may be insufficient in the quest to galvanize Africa's technological liberation, Pan-Africanism is leaning heavily on education with a focus on science, technology and innovation. If investment in education, science and innovation is to bear fruit, it's not just about the money that we put in, but about a philosophy that proposes four basic ideas. One, that doing science is a natural and critical part of learning. Two, curiosity about the natural world is a powerful catalyst for techno technological advancement and problem solving. Three, with the appropriate guidance, this natural curiosity and need to make sense of the world around us becomes the foundation for beginning to use skills of inquiry to explore basic phenomena and materials of this world. And four, science exploration can be a rich context in which students can use to develop other important skills, including working with one another, intellectual language, leadership, and mathematical understanding. And that is the paradigm shift. Join us again on the next edition of the program. But until then, thank you for stopping by. Good night.